Now, Readsy is an incredibly easy platform to use to write your first ebook. It comes with all the basics that you'll need to write something that you can be proud of. I'm Mike with Writer Sanctuary, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up your ebook in the Readsy writing app. Now, before we get started, I'm going to assume that you have an idea of something that you want to write. For me, I have no shortage of stuff to write. In fact, I have a folder on my computer that is full of ideas that I want to get to. But anyway, after you get started with signing up with Readsy, you're confronted with your first screen, probably the marketplace. This is where you can hire professionals to help you polish up your book for publishing. You don't necessarily need to use them. What you're going to do is you're going to click on the books link in the top middle. And your screen should have no books on it. I have three, Freelancer Shell, Kingmaker, Fury. Now, when we want to add a new book, we can either create a book or we can import a document. Now, I haven't tried using the import document feature yet, only because I write all my stuff directly in Readsy. But it should be easy enough to import your document from just about anything that you have, as long as Readsy can support the file type. So in this case, we're going to create a new book. So we're going to click on this Create Book button. And from here, we're going to add in a book title. Now, for this example, I'm going to do a, a part two to my Freelancer's Tale. So part two, oops, Freelancer's Tale. I like to use project titles as book titles in the very beginning because then that'll give me time to come up with the actual title of the book later on. So we're just going to hit the create button. And from here, we can either manage or write the book. Now let's go over the managing tool real quick. If we click on manage, we can see it's an overview. This is where we can hire a professional. And if you hire editors, graphic designers, or anything in Readsy, it'll show up here for the request for professionals. If you want to export your book at any time, you just click on the export tool. You can do so in EPUB and Mobi and print ready PDFs. And you can add in your book covers. And your formatting options are kind of limited in Readsy. You only get like three templates for it. Um, they do say that there's probably more coming in the future, but this was two and a half years ago and they still haven't added more to it. However, recently I did take a survey with Readsy and one of the questionnaire, uh, one of the parts of the questionnaire was formatting tools. So I suspect Readsy is going to be pushing out some cool stuff in the near future. So, and we scroll down and from here we can do a print on demand with Blurb. Blurb is kind of expensive compared to like Amazon. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but the options there if you'd like it. And you can back up your book as a docx file. Now it's always better to back up your work no matter what you're doing online because you never know when you're going to lose your internet connection. And if that happens, you're not working on anything. So from here, we just go back up and we can go into our settings. Now, this is the screen I really wanted to highlight. From here, we can change our title to anything we want. So we can change the title at any point. So I will be changing this title the closer I get to finishing this book. This is just a project title that reminds me of what I'm writing about. Then you can add a subtitle if you'd like, a description or synopsis of your uh, book. You can upload your ebook cover, which you've probably seen on mine. I have Fury and a Freelancer's Tale has book covers. And you can also archive the book to set it aside out of your list, or you can delete it permanently. So I just wanted to show this a little bit so that you had a working familiar idea of what the settings are for your book. Now from here, we can hit the back button to go back to our list of books, or we can click on the continue writing button on the top right, which is what we're going to do because it's going to take us directly to writing this particular book. Okay, from here you get a tutorial that shows you all the cool things that comes up in the Readsy writing app. The first one is being able to select uh, text and apply the formatting for it. So you have paragraphs, you can add headers, uh, you can change the alignment of the text, bullet lists. I mean, it has all the basics that you'll ever need to write a book. Uh, you can hit skip the tutorial, but we're going to go through the five things here that it has. So then you have the insert chapters and parts from the sidebar, which is here at the top left corner where it says add and has the button. Uh, you can copy and paste, respect your existing formatting sometimes. There have been a few things that I've tried to copy and paste from other platforms that didn't quite work well in Readsy, and it didn't take much to fix it, but the possibility is out there that sometimes when you copy and paste stuff from one platform to another, sometimes formatting just doesn't work right. There is no such thing as a 100% compatible software. 
Then you also have export to professionally designed themes. That's what I was telling you earlier. That's only got three, but they do look really nice. So, and indenser automatic, which is great if you don't quite know what you're doing. And it uses the industry standard for formatting, so you can be sure that all of your books look fairly well when they are published to ebook or uh, print. Okay, so once we're done with the tutorial, we just hit the done button. And the first thing we're going to set up is our planning board. That is over here on the top left corner. We just click on the planning button. Reads will give you an example of all the different things that you can do with your planning board. So you can separate everything in acts just so that you can keep track of all of your different parts of your book uh, without overflow. Makes things a lot more organized and easier to find. However, I'm not gonna use any of that. So I'm gonna hit the delete button here on the top right. Confirm, Woo. that board is gone. So now I'm gonna click on the plus button here to manage boards. I'm gonna create a new board. I'm gonna title this outline for the book. And create the board. From here, we can add a blank note or a folder if we wanted to separate it into greater parts. I'm not gonna worry about that quite yet. So I'm gonna do a blank note. And then this is gonna be titled Outline the book and from here we can add an image if we'd like if it would help us with uh, research Or we can add a short description And we're going to begin writing here and the way I outline books is I use brackets Now the reason why I use brackets is so that I know anything that is in the bracket is actually going to be part of the book Sometimes I come up with dialogue or scenes when I'm walking around that come to mind that I would like to see happen at some point in the book so I'll separate a lot of the stuff in uh, in the outline with brackets just so that I remember that's why that's what I need to change like you should see the outline I have for Fury it's a mess and yeah I do like to outline my books but it doesn't necessarily mean that's where they're gonna go in fact Kingmaker is nowhere near where it was when I first began writing it that's because the stories change the characters do what they want so it's okay to outline just keep in mind that it doesn't have to stick that way at least it doesn't for me so once we're getting ready to set up our online, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, moving from commenting to blogging. And then I'm going to talk about moving from yeah, blogging to being an author. I, at this point, now it's just an outline. I don't need everything to be perfect. I didn't capitalize the T. I don't care. <laughs> I just those. It's just the outline. I'm gonna wind up deleting it when I talk about those points anyway. So once we start adding all of our outlines and research and whatnots, we can pin any document in the planning board by clicking on the pin note here on the top right. I'm gonna pin it. It'll be pinned to the manuscript. So when we go to our manuscript. We now have the outline of the book pinned note at the top. It's also accessible by the pinned note icon, so we can disable it or enable it. And it's kind of like the split screen view that's in Readsy, but or in Scrivener, but it's not as affluent. Uh, if you want to change this pinned note, you can only do one at a time currently in Readsy. So if you want something else to be pinned, you have to go back into your outline or into your planning board, pin that note come back to the uh, manuscript, scroll down to where you were writing, and then continue. It's kind of a pain, but it works that way. Regardless, I'm a big fan of the pinned uh, comments only because I like to keep track of everything. I get lost pretty well, especially if it takes two years to write a book. Uh, I forget people's how to spell people's names. And these are characters I came up with. <laughs> and sometimes you just forget, especially when you're as busy as I am. So having something on the screen there that helps me remember is great. So from here, we're going to set our goals. So if we go to goals and insight in the top right, we are going to set a target for our book at 60,000 words, which is roughly almost twice the size of a freelancer's tale the first time. And then we want this one done by the end of June. June, there we go. June 30th. This will give me ample time to write the book, mostly because I've got so many other things going on right now. I want to finish polishing up Kingmaker. I've got Fury to write, plus the third book after that. I would like to have the entire series done by the end of 2024. So I've got a lot of writing to do. 
this new book is going to be going alongside of it because it's going to be having all my insights on being a self-published author. So everything I learn while I'm writing this series of books is going to be in this next book. So I'm kind of writing again two at the same time, but not really. Mostly it's going to be keeping my notes so I don't forget certain things. And it's incredibly handy because if I come across a great marketing platform, then I can put that in the book too and just the book's there to remind me. But anyway, so we can set our goals and what we're going to do is configure the days that we want to write. Now from here, uh, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are usually set for Fury right now. So I'm going to say Friday, Saturday, and Sunday maybe. Mostly because I'd like to write Despair on Mondays and Fridays. So uh, I'll just say those three days. So I'm going to hit Save. And then I'm going to hit Create Goal. Now I need to write 444 words per day to finish on time, which is actually quite low. And that will probably take me about a half hour. And that's if I only just write Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Depending on how the work goes throughout the week, I might be able to toss in some more. So I could probably have this particular book done well before June 30th, but I want to give myself that cushion. That way I can get the rest of my important books out of the way. So once we have the manuscript goal, we can then add additional writing goals if you'd like. And from this, we can title them. We can say how many words we want to write. We can select whether we want it done by today, tomorrow, this week, this month, or set up a custom date. So there's all kinds of ways you can set up goals to help motivate you to write. And the last thing I want to share with you is front and back matter. Now, the front and back matter is stuff like your uh, epilogue, prologue, your table of contents. All of it um, is really easy to add in Readsy and... Um, you don't have to set them up now. You can set them up at any point. So like if we want to add, uh, see right now the copyright and table of contents are already um, enabled by default, but we can click on edit and we can enable anything we want on here. So I'm going to need a dedication page, definitely. And I don't know if I'm going to need anything more than that for this particular book, but if there was something in the front that we wanted to add, we can just add a new chapter and then we can call this. No, why is it not saving it? <laughs> I don't know what that was, but anyway, we're going to call this, chap this chapter um, additional dedications for the hell of it. Then we can drag and drop it into the front matter. And then when the book is set up, it's going to um, properly place this page or place this page after the table of contents. That is unless we enable everything else. The same with the back matter. We just hit edit. Now, some of these pages are essentially templates. So like if I want to use the about the author, I can enable it, click on it. And then from here, I can add my image, add a bio, put all my social media links. I can add more to it. I can add my Substack URL for the newsletter. I can also enable also by Michael Brockbank. So if I enable that, I click on that. Then I can add in all my other books that are online where people can buy them. Now, this is great for eBooks because then they have the store links. They can just tap on it and buy the rest of the books. Obviously, the links aren't going to work in the printed copy, but they are there. And don't forget that front and back matter can be added at any point. You don't need to do it at the very beginning of the book. You can wind up changing your mind later on, just enable or disable whatever it is. And if you need more pages in your front and back matter, just remember to keep to create a chapter and just drag and drop it where you need it. Something else I would like to show is the some of the front and back matter isn't necessarily in those sections. So like with back matter, you only have the two things plus notes. If I hit done, now, if we go to body and we click on edit, we get more. We have the conclusion, the epilogue, the afterward, and we can enable all these as we go. So like we wanted to do an epilogue at the end of the book, we could just write the epilogue there. So I was asked this before where someone was asking me how to add an epilogue to Readsy. It's right here in the body. We're going to disable that for now because I'm not sure if I want to put an epilogue in this particular book. And just like the other ones, once we're done adding what we want, we just hit done. Now we just click on chapter one and we can get started writing. Now, when we want to add additional chapters, we can just hit the add button here, add a new chapter and continue writing. 
So there you have it. That's uh, basically setting up Reezy in a nutshell. Fairly straightforward, easy to use. I I like the platform quite a bit. It, it works perfect for my purposes. Um, I like right now. I am thirty thousand words into Fury. Uh, Kingmaker is about to be published, and then I'm going to be writing this next book in Reezy. So it's a uh, it's a good system. I like it. It doesn't have nearly the customizations that something like Scrivener or Atticus has for formatting. But who's to say what they're going to be changing in the near future? Uh, Reedsy is constantly developing the app, which is one of the reasons why I like it so much, is because it's not something that feels abandoned. In fact, the planning boards were added, what, six months ago? And with all the features that people keep talking about uh, from the developers, there might be some cool stuff to come soon. So I'm kind of excited to see what happens. And yes, Reedsy is free to use as a writing app. You don't need to hire their editors or their graphic design team or anything like that. It's a completely free system. You're just kind of limited when it comes to exporting. So what kind of book do you plan on writing? In this video, I did the example of writing A Freelancer's Tale Part 2, which is going to be moving beyond A Freelancer's Tale. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, especially since I have so much on my plate. But at 444 words per day, I shouldn't be, it shouldn't take me very long to do it all. In fact, I could probably do a week's worth of writing inside of an hour on a Friday. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. For more videos about self-publishing, blogging, freelance writing, or anything else I cover, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. I think it's going to do it for me today. I'll see you next time.